I'm on my way to Poland, to the city of Gdansk. These days, most people vacationing in Europe are avoiding Eastern Europe because of the war in Ukraine. Poland borders Ukraine, Belarus and the Russian enclave of Kaliningrad. Meaning it's right next door to war in crisis. That scares tourists. But is it justified? I want to check out a city that is usually overrun in summer by visitors from Germany and Scandinavia. I've booked a city tour with Sebastian and I blurt out the harsh reality. Sebastian, if I take a look around, there are not that many tourists. Is is Poland, is the tourism in Poland affected by the war in Ukraine? Is that the reason? But yes, uh, you have to remember that we have the war next to our borders, so it had to affect for the tourism, especially for this, uh, like the bigger groups uh, from the States, from, uh, from all, all, all the parts of the, of the world. The individual clients, uh, clients are coming, yes, so the tourists are here, but it's not the same uh, what was what was before? Like uh, you have to remember about the pandemic. Now we have the war. Yes. So all these things, yes, they affected on our uh, local tourism. What do the people say when they're canceling the tour? Do they say the war is too close? It might come over to Poland. If uh, they can choose, they will choose another destination where is no any risk. So uh, that's one of the point. The second point is uh, that they are afraid of the imagination. There is plenty of the refugees on the streets because that's the numbers here. Yeah? We have almost 4 million people which came to Poland from Ukraine. Tourism authorities reiterate that traveling in Poland is just as safe as in Western Europe. But there are still 60% fewer foreign tourists and 90% fewer group trips. That's hard because every tourist is needed here. The port brought a lot of money into the city. You can see that here in this street, Ulice Dugi or Long Lane. This is where wealthy citizens lived. But look what it says up here. 1953. Nothing is as old as it looks. The historic center was destroyed during the Second World War. All these houses are new reconstructed down to the last detail. Only this house here, the Ophagen house, is original. What to do with the ruins in the city? Some of the ideas say that it's better to leave it as an open-air museum for the next generation to show them how the war was cruel. Another idea was to create the new city of the Gdańsk, for example in Letnice or Newport district. But finally they decided about reconstructing the old the main town St. Mary's Church also miraculously survived the bombing. It's the largest brick church in Europe. Do widzenia! Have a nice cruise, do widzenia, bye! Well, that's a cool ferry. A pirate ship. It casts off several times a day and heads to Westerplatte, a peninsula close to Gdansk. My destination is in sight. Now I'm on Westerplatte, a place with a lot of history. Before World War I, Westerplatte was a seaside resort. This is where the people of Gdansk went in summer, a popular destination. But after the First World War, this was no longer such a peaceful place. Poland built a military depot. And then, on September 1st, 1939, it happened. The event that changed Europe. Indeed, the entire world. This is where the first shots of World War II were fired. Germany invaded Poland. This is the former godhouse. It has deliberately been preserved as a ruin. 182 Polish soldiers resisted the German invasion for seven days. Here, their names are immortalized. 
Westerplatte isn't just a historical place. It's now also a memorial. For the people of Poland, Westerplatte is a symbol of resistance against Nazi Germany. And this monument here was erected in honor of the heroes of Westerplatte. War never again, it says here. And yet, in the middle of Europe, there has been war since Russia attacked Ukraine. Dieser Ort hier ist ja verknüpft mit dem Zweiten Weltkrieg. Jetzt haben wir auch wieder einen Krieg in Europa, nebenan in der Ukraine. Inwieweit sind Sie besorgt oder auch nicht, jetzt hier in Polen Urlaub zu machen? Äh, sagen wir es mal so, wir hatten eigentlich ursprünglich eine andere Reise geplant, die noch eigentlich viel weiter östlicher gegangen wäre. Äh, die ist gecancelt worden, äh, sodass wir noch dankbar waren, dass wir tatsächlich Danzig besuchen durften und auch hier im Umkreis sind. Aber natürlich mache ich mir Gedanken, heute Nacht hatten wir Flieger gehört über den Hotel, wo ich sage, es rückt immer näher und man sieht das natürlich auch online, dass man sieht, was tatsächlich passiert. Und was glauben Sie, was müsste man tun, um naja, wieder Frieden in Europa zu haben? Was ist Ihre Meinung? Ich würde mir wünschen, dass man mehr auf Diplomatie auch setzt, weil ich glaube, nur reden hilft. Waffen alleine ist, glaube ich, keine Lösung. Reden, 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 reden. Ich denke, es gibt nichts anderes. Schießen oder reden? Dann lieber reden. Lieber reden. Ja. Okay. I think it's really sad, like people are losing their their family, their house, and like migrating to other country. I hope it stops soon, but yeah, I think like a uh, neighbor country like to Ukraine also feel threatened, you know, because we never know what's going to happen. So we all just hope that it's going to stop soon and yeah. I look at these photos and I know that a few hundred kilometers away, war is a reality. I hope we will find the strength to learn from the past. This place makes me a bit sad and at the same time thoughtful. Westerplatte not only reminds us of a terrible war, but also serves as a warning to keep peace in Europe.